Good morning to everyone joining from the United States and good afternoon to those tuning in from Europe. My name is Ilva Tara. I'm a non-resident senior fellow here at the Atlantic Council in Washington, D.C. On behalf of the Europe Center and the EuroAsia Center, I'm delighted to welcome you to this public event to discuss one of the world's most pressing issues, global food insecurity. The United States Department of Agriculture Economic Research Service estimated that in 2022 there were 1.3 billion food insecure people. Of that number, the World Food Programme estimates that 349 million people face acute food insecurity and 900,000 people live in famine-like conditions. This problem is far-reaching and long-standing, and it's getting worse. This week, we mark a somber anniversary of one year since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. This brutal war has taken a horrific toll on Ukrainian lives and its destruction far -reaching, has far-reaching consequences beyond Ukraine. Often referred to as the breadbasket of Europe, Ukraine has historically been one of the world's largest grain producers, exporting nearly 15% of the world's wheat, maize and barley. Agricultural exports also make up a significant portion of Ukraine's economy. With his brutal war, Putin has intentionally targeted Ukraine's agricultural sector, from production to export, jeopardizing the already food insecure regions that most depend on Ukrainian agriculture exports. In his speech in Poland on Tuesday, President Biden accused Putin of weaponizing food by blocking ports in the Black Sea to prevent Ukraine from exporting its grain. And the European Union has also been swift to identify these tactics and respond. To talk about the impact the war has had on food insecurity, as well as uh, the EU's response, I'm joined by the European Commission for Agriculture, Janusz Wojciechowski. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Mm -hmm. Good morning. And before we start, very quickly, a few uh, housekeeping uh, notes for those watching uh, online. You can submit a question to the commissioner using the Zoom chat function. We'll have time in the end of this 30 minutes conversation to uh, get your questions. Uh, you can also follow along at, uh, uh, on Twitter at AC Europe and AC Eurasia using the hashtag AC Europe. Now, commissioner, I'd love to start with the big picture. Earlier this month, uh, you joined President uh, of European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, as part of, as of a delegation uh, uh, trip to Ukraine. Uh, this week, President Biden made a trip to Ukraine in a historic show of support uh, in the lead up of the one year mark uh, of the war. Can you tell us about your experience on the ground in, in Ukraine? How has it informed your perspective uh, of the war? You are Polish as well, so you can give us uh, your personal uh, experience and how is that uh, 10 hours uh, ra uh, uh, rail trip to, to uh, Kyiv? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, that's, uh, I, 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 I like to express my, my um great admission for the Ukrainian nation, for the Ukrainian army, for the uh, heroic uh, fight against the Russian unprovoked illegal aggression. And it was uh, underestimated by the Putin, by the, by the Russia, that uh, such strong res uh, opposition, resistance of, of Ukraine. And the second, uh, which was not uh, underestimated by, by Russia, uh, it was miscalculation of uh, Russia, it was the united position of the Western world. Uh, European Union, uh, United States, uh, and uh, strong support for Ukraine. This is very important to, 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 to keep this position. Uh, this is aggression against Ukraine, but uh, the border of, between Ukraine and, uh, and Poland, which is uh, the at the same time the border of the European Union and the border of the NATO. Mm. And uh, this is a small river named Buk. And uh, in the history, Russia never stopped in this, in this place. They, they, they were always going farther. When they achieved this, this river, mm -hmm. they, they uh, went uh, farther in, in the history. Uh, I, you said I'm from Poland, yes, that uh, during the last 300 uh, uh, years, my country, Poland, 250 years was under Russian occupation or under Russian political domination. We, we fully understand what means the, the, the Russian uh, 
uh, imperial policy. We, we know the consequences and uh, all signals to support Ukraine are very important. And uh, you say that that's a very important visit of the European Commission in, in to get joint meeting with the Ukrainian government. And also the, now the visit, the President Biden visit, which is very, very important signal for Ukraine. And we should do everything which is possible to support Ukraine. From the European perspective, we are doing also the everything which is possible. Uh, we have no doubts that we need to support Ukraine. We will go into more details about the EU help and support uh, for, yeah. uh, for Ukraine. But how was it one year after the war? How was it to visit Kyiv? Uh, in the Kiev, that I, I, that there was no, uh, you know, the no, uh, uh, not not visible that is the capital of the country uh, in the world. That uh, no, uh, life is normal in the Kiev. Maybe during the trip uh, by by train, the train from the Polish border to to, to Kiev, there was uh, the, the the first uh, the first. Uh, uh, Visible sign was that uh, dark, that no, no, no lights in the in the villages, in the in the towns. Is it because people have left? Uh, the, the, no, no. The, the there is people's no electricity. Not, no, no, no. Sometimes no electricity, but sometimes there was, you know, the, the, there is a security the, uh, requirement that to not to 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 use the lights. But uh, my impression was it was very impressive that Ukrainian people are uh, they, they they position the heroic heroic uh, position in this this uh, uh, against the Russian invasion. Absolutely, That's I agree. I think they have impressed the entire world, and they are mm -hmm. not fighting only for their own values and for their democracy, for, but for ours the too. Democracy values, of course. That that's uh, and. Uh, you say that's about the, the, also the consequences for the for the food security. I'd like to um, to express my my thanks, my also my admission for the Ukrainian farmers who work uh, very hard under bombs, under under attacks. Many times they they are killed on their fields, but they continue their work and to to um, contribute into the food security at the global level. Ukraine is very important uh, food producer, food food exporter, and they they continued this 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 effort, which is again impressive. Actually, as you said, uh, agriculture is key to Ukraine's economy, of and course. even under these uh, difficult circumstances, they have increased its grain uh, export to the European Union, helped by Brussels moratorium on tariffs mm -hmm. uh, on mm -hmm. Ukraine. How important can Ukraine's agriculture? sector be to the European Union uh, now that Ukraine continues its accession path? No, first of all, the Ukrainian uh, agriculture, uh, the, the, the production, especially cereals, maize, uh, uh, sunflower seeds, uh, rape seeds, uh, is important uh, for the food security at the global level. Ukraine, before the war, was uh, very uh, important uh, exporter of cereals, to the, especially to the North Africa countries, to the Middle East countries. This uh, export was at the beginning of the war, was uh, almost fully blocked. And I remember my first meet meeting with Ukrainian minister, uh, Mikola Solsky, minister of agriculture of Ukraine. He said that we need to export five, six million tons of grain per month, but we have now to export nothing almost zero. And thanks to support of the European Union, solidarity lanes, we, we, this, this export was increased. And uh, on the August last year, there was opened uh, the uh, Black Sea Road. Uh, and uh, now the export from Ukraine is the, at the same level than before the war. And the, the crisis situation was, uh, was um, uh, the, the, the problem was solved temporarily, but we don't know what will happen uh, uh, with the Black Sea roads uh, because there is uh, Russia it's in the posing. history. Yes, the, the, they, yeah. uh, as the President Biden said, they weaponizing the, the, the food, and uh, we should be able to support also the to continue the solidarity lanes mm -hmm. to to uh, support Ukrainian export. First of all, for the for the for the third countries. Uh, maybe not uh, directly to the European Union. Uh, of, of course, some, for example, the maize from Ukraine is needed for the, for the, uh, f as a feed for the animal production in the European Union. 
How do these initiatives complement each other? As you mentioned, the solidarity lanes and the Black Sea uh, deal. To this, in the 2022, the solidarity lanes, the, the export by solidarity lanes was about the 24 million tons. Uh, export by Black Sea Road was about the 20 million tons. The solidarity lanes, uh, more by the solidarity lanes. But now there is, uh, when is, uh, fu um, Black Sea Road is functioning, uh, about the 60% by, by um, Black Sea Road, 40% by Solidarity Lanes. The Black Sea Grain Initiative, you are, uh, I'm sure you are aware of it, is up for renewal on March 19th. Yeah. Uh, and Ukraine and Russia are both escalating rhetoric about the importance of their own agriculture exports. What do you expect from the renewal conversations uh, in the next uh, few weeks? Uh, you know, that's... Uh, uh, no. The main question is uh, what will be um, the, the situation uh, with, with the Russian aggression, with the, 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 the Black Sea Road, will be open all time or not? This is the, the, the main concern of the, our Ukrainian partners uh, also. But the next problem is that, you know, that 2021, uh, before the war, mm -hmm. the Ukrainian harvest was the, uh, and the record, it was a record of, of the harvest this, this year. It was uh, uh, more than 100 million tons of grain, 107 million tons. And uh, 2022, it was only 67. And 2023 probably will be less, about the 55, 60 million tons. And uh, uh, what is the mm, uh, consequence of this situation? That in the European Union and uh, also the United States, we uh, should produce more. The food security is uh, now in the top of the of the of the political challenges. That's uh, food security is uh, the same important. The importance is the same like military security, like energy security. Uh, we also there are consequences for our policy. And we temporarily suspended some restrictions for the farmers. Uh, 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 some requirements for the environmental and climate uh, issues that because we need to produce more food now. The food security is... Uh, is both priority. a priority, uh, priority and is. a threat at the same yes. time. Yes, Especially of for the underdeveloped countries. Yes, of course, yeah. Uh, Russia has mined agricultural land in uh, southern Ukraine, rendering them unusable and dangerous for the farmers, as you, as you also mm -hmm. mentioned. Halo Trust, the UK-based uh, non-profit which removes landmines, um, has reports that say that at least 40% of the country must be searched and cleared of explosives. What actions can the EU take to help uh, Ukraine restore its farmland? No, you know, this is uh, to, 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 um, uh, uh, to rebuild the, the Ukrainian potential in all economy, not only, that's, uh, not only in agriculture. This is... Uh, Huge challenge, but now, the first of all, we need to, to support Euro, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine in the, uh, Ukrainian military forces mm -hmm. to win in this war. And next, we need we need to to, uh, to think how to support, how to uh, rebuild the Ukrainian potential also in the agriculture. Now, the the uh, the Ukrainian uh, partners they uh, said give us the weapon. This is the most important for us. We need the weapon. The rest, of course, they are, for example, the European Union support the small farmers in, in Ukraine. That's because uh, that is very important to supporting. They are very important for the, for the food security also in Ukraine, inside mm -hmm. the Ukraine. Uh, we, uh, the, the, the program 50 billion euro to, uh, sorry, 15 million euro to support you, small farmers in Ukraine was uh, received very well by, by Ukrainians. But first of all, Ukraine should win in this, this, this horrible war. And next, of course, there's huge challenge for all democratic world to support Ukraine to, to the, the, the process of, of uh, reconstruction of this uh, very damaged, uh, destroyed country. Indeed, and not only the farmers, but also the Ukrainian agribusiness companies have been hit hard by, by the war and its con yeah. consequences. They have taken huge losses Russia from Russian inter attacks, yeah. Yeah, intentionally. Yeah. Intentionally attack the Ukrainian uh, food system, the, 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 the agricultural potential, because they are experienced in the history. 
to uh, use uh, food or may, maybe, may, correctly speaking, lack of food as a weapon. Yeah, uh, is the EU thinking about ways to support the companies which are suffering huge financial losses also? Uh, no, yes, of course, that, that's, uh, the, uh, we support the, the Ukraine that's uh, received the many forms of support for, for Ukraine from the European Union, from the European Union, uh, at, at, the, uh, uh, at the European Union level and also the member states. The total amount of the support is about the 50 billion euro from the beginning of the war. No, there, there, there are different uh, forms of support. This is um, maybe too, too, too early to, to, to say it in the details, what kind of form uh, is necessary. Now, as I said, uh, the, the most important Let's support the is weapons. <laughs> yes. And talking about that, uh, one year of, of the war, how do you see, uh, how do you assess transatlantic cooperation uh, in supporting uh, Ukraine? You did say, actually, that it, this was a unique show of uh, unity. Uh, mm -hmm. from the EU and the US and the, the West in general, uh, but uh, more specifically on food security. How do you see the transatlantic cooperation? It's very important, uh, transatlantic cooperation, because uh, the European Union and United States, uh, they are the, one of the biggest food producers uh, in the world and the biggest food exporters uh, in, the, in the world. And uh, the potential, agricultural potential uh, in these countries, open trade, for example, that's uh, uh, to produce, uh, um, no, to, to maybe t this is the time that we need to produce more than in the past. But from other hand, of course, we need to, uh, mm, uh, to make our agriculture more resilient, more resilient, more sustainable, because uh, for the future, that's, uh, uh, food security is not only intensive production, sustainable production, sustainability is very important. This is the reason that, for example, in the European Union we have farm to fork strategy, which is a strategy to make agriculture more resilient, more sustainable, uh, more, uh, for example, the, uh, uh, in uh, animal production, more uh, care for animal welfare standards. But this is the long, long term uh, action. But uh, uh, also the, the exchange of information. This is one of the, the um, uh, goals of my visit in US, my talks with uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsek, to exchange our experience. Because we have the, the common challenges like uh, um, uh, lack of generational renewal. What is the problem? We will, we will not uh, ensure food security without the farmers. But there is a, the, the same problem. in. European Union in in United States, they are n uh, uh, the the age of the farmers. Average age of the farmers in European Union is 57 years. Uh, probably in US is similar. No, no, not probably is similar in in US. And the problem of uh, successors, who will be the farmer in the future, and we must to increase the the system to support to to make uh, uh, farmers work more secure food security for, for all citizens, but economic security for farmers. This is also the, the huge challenge. Exchange of, of our um, uh, uh, knowledge, exchange of our good practices is very important also the, in our cooperation with United States. Uh, as a commissioner for agriculture at the European Commission, your portfolio covers a vast range of uh, uh, areas from sustainable uh, agriculture to the new common agriculture policy to the farm to fork that you mentioned, um, strategy to the animal welfare. With such a breadth, uh, breadth of responsibilities, how do you view your role as commissioner and what are your specific priorities for this year, for 2023? This is very important year for, for the um, uh, poli agriculture policy in the European Union because this is the first year of the new uh, reformed common agriculture policy. 1st of January, we started the uh, uh, common agriculture policy for period five years to the 20, 23, 27. And uh, there is, uh, uh, what is the, 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 the main changes? That's, it is the biggest reform in the last 30 years of the common agriculture policy, which is the oldest policy in the European Union uh, from the 
1962. Uh, last year we had the 60 years anniversary of the common agriculture policy, but this is policy all time reform, mm -hmm. uh, modernized. And uh, now the, this, the policy is uh, we support farmers, especially farmers uh, uh, who uh, voluntarily introduce more sustainable practices, more friendly for environment, for climate, that we have the system of, of, uh, of the eco schemes, uh, special payment for the farmers who voluntarily introduce uh, more friendly uh, climate and environment practices. This is very important. And we monitor the situation, the introduction, in, uh, introduction of this new uh, policy is very important, correct introduction. Also, the more, uh, uh, there is more flexibilities for member states. You know, we have the 27 member states with different uh, situation, different structure of agriculture, and not uh, the same instruments are uh, we can use in each member states. This is more flexible for, for member states policy. And uh, this year, this is uh, the main challenge to introduce this, this uh, reformed common agriculture policy in the European Union. So good luck with that and the war in Ukraine at the same time. I have uh, many other questions, but I want to, uh, to give uh, also the opportunity to our uh, uh, virtual uh, followers to, to have uh, okay. the chance to, has, uh, to, to ask a question. So I'll start actually with one of them before uh, having the chance to talk to you again. Uh, the question is from Andrew Danieri, Assistant Director of the Atlantic Council's Europe uh, uh, Eurasia Center. He actually asked on something that we did uh, talk about, but probably if you can go into more details, how can the EU better support Ukraine's private sector directly, especially agriculture, agri business companies and exporters? He says also, also, are there any discussions about helping Ukrainian agriculture companies with uh, debt reconstructuring, debt payment freezers or new loans for them? You know, the first of all is uh, my priority is to support the, the farmers. That's the companies is the, the maybe the different uh, issue and maybe the, not the main responsibility, for, uh, my responsibility as a commissioner for agriculture. Uh, uh, we need to support the Ukrainian farmers and this is one of the reasons that, uh, that uh, one of the programs I said, this is the small farmers support. Because we, uh, we also uh, have to, to um, protect uh, food security in Ukraine because uh, we have now the problem how to support Ukrainian export uh, from Ukraine to, to, to the third countries, but there is also the problem uh, to, secu to, 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 to ensure food security inside the Ukraine. And the small farmers, they play a very important role. And uh, my priority is to support the uh, the, the small farmers in Ukraine, uh, the companies uh, is this uh, different topic and uh, not the uh, not the priority now. Okay, uh, I have another question uh, from Andrew Asland, a senior fellow at the Stockholm Free World uh, Forum, on the slow speed of inspection of grain export in the Black uh, Sea. He wants to know if the EU can do something uh, to help speed up the inspections. You know, the inspections are very important. That's because, uh, of course, we are responsible for the, for the safety of food, for the quality of food in, important from Ukraine. And uh, um, these figures that the scale of the import shows that there are no barriers uh, for, the, for, the, for, the, for this, this export. Like, if you ask the farmers uh, from Poland, for example, from Romania, from, from Hungary, they will say you that uh, the uh, import from Ukraine is too 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 easy, that too 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 much import of uh, from Ukraine, because uh, it creates also some problems for farmers in the bordering countries. This is the reason that we decided, the Europe European Commission decided to activate a special crisis reserve, part of crisis reserve, to support farmers uh, in these bordering countries because of the problem with, uh, with, uh, on, the, on the market, because uh, import from Ukraine, this is the reason that 
uh, it was reduce access to the markets for, for the farmers in these countries, bordering countries. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in your uh, awareness, is this help uh, already in the, uh, has already uh, made it to the farmers? Are they, uh, if you have any information on that, have they been helped and is the financial aid with them already? Or we are yes, we are preparing. This is not not uh, the decision is not um, uh, uh, adopted, but uh, but we are preparing. That I, I, yes, I announced this uh, uh, during my speech in the European Parliament, and we are preparing this this uh, support for the farmers in, in in bordering countries because there is uh, you know the regional, local, but very serious problem for farmers in, in these countries. But returning to, to to the question about the. Uh, you know the, the the control on the borders. Mm -hmm. If we return to the to the uh, scale of the import, like before the war, it, it shows that it is um, goodwill in member states to support this this import. And there are no barriers. In, according to my knowledge, there are no barriers for Ukrainian uh, export. I have another question from the audience. How do you balance the need to produce more food with the need for sustainable and organic food production, which might have lower mm -hmm. outputs than uh, conventional farming? This is no, uh, you know, there is no collision between uh, to produce, to, to be productive and to be sustainable. And like you say, the organic farming no, we, we have the, the uh, like, I can uh, show the, 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 the concrete example, like Italy or Austria. They are countries with uh, very well developed organic sector, but the, like in Italy, the, the agriculture is very productive. And uh, uh, what is the value of the organic uh, farming? Mm -hmm. This is the good uh, proposal for the farmers, especially small farmers, who are not able for the competition in conventional farming or intensive mm -hmm. farming. But they have a chance in the competition uh, in organic production. And uh, no, organic uh, farmers that are now in this specific situation where we have the problem with uh, big uh, fertilizer, increase of the fertilizer prices, uh, plant protection, uh, uh, also the, the, the increase of the prices. The cost of production in conventional is, is high, but uh, organic farmers have chance to, to, to be competitive. That's, of course, the organic food is also very important for our consumers. Uh, I have another question, which actually we talked a little bit, but uh, I'm glad that we can go into more depth. How eager are farmers in the European Union to adopt labor-saving technologies, given the aging of the farming population that you mentioned? It's around above 50, 50 years old. 50, so, 57? 57. They basically convinced the daughters and sons to work on agriculture now, <laughs> <laughs> not just parents. No, you know, that's, I don't know how the farmers are, are doing it, but, but uh, no, there is... Uh, there is um, uh, now to be the farmer, who is the farmer, uh, who, uh, he, he has to have a knowledge from different uh, disciplines that, that should be the, not the, the specialist for the farming, but for the computer technologies, for the, for the economy, uh, the, the law, or to, to know the, the, the regulations uh, is also very important. But uh, no, of course, we support farmers. Uh, there the are many um, initiatives to, for, for the advisory service for the farmers is also very important. Like now we introduce the, the new uh, reformed common agriculture policy. We support farmers also by the adv advisory services. This is a very important part of the reform. We have also reached towards the end of our uh, conversation, Commissioner, but I would like to ask you another question on how do you envision, how do you see uh, the global food insecurity in general? Is it a threat that you said is a priority, but is it a threat that will live with us for longer, uh, on the long yes, term, or is... we can really address it and at least try to change the tide? This is a real threat, of course. But uh, we need to, um, of course, uh, in the European Union, in the United States, we need to continue our, our agricultural pro production. Also, we need to avoid this, uh, this negative uh, or, or to reduce this negative uh, phenomena like uh, lack of generational renewal, uh, because without the farmers will be not food security also in the European Union and the United States. 
but like uh, the support for Africa, for the, the, this is the huge risk for the f food insecurity in this, this continent. Uh, but there is the, the potential to increase uh, agricultural production directly in this continent. That's, you know, the mm, uh, uh, deliver of food, mm -hmm. export, uh, of course, is, is needed, but this is not the mm, long-term solution. Long-term solution is to support production at, in, in place in, in Africa. We need to support their small farmers by, by the... Uh, uh, investment, for example, the water, water management, etc. That's, uh, oh, of course, we need to, to increase the support for, for food security uh, in the developing countries. I wish we had more time to discuss about this. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Janusz Wojciechowski, uh, for joining us. I hope the rest of your visit in Washington, D.C. is as productive and you have safe travels thank home. Thank you very much. Also, following along uh, with the work of uh, Europe Center and the Eurasia Center, uh, you can follow that online at atlanticcouncil.org and on Twitter at AC Europe and AC Eurasia. Thank you for joining today and see you next time.